In a previous video, I had developed the Python program that uh, was like an electronic or computer-based flashcards for multiplication, and I showed how to uh, change it up to where you could use it for addition and, and for subtraction. Uh, this one is a little bit more complicated because it actually deals with um, if you wanted to make a, a test for um, for multiplication. And you'll go through and you'll ask how many problems are on the test and then you'll prompt the, the user or the student for the answers to random multiplication problems. And so what I wanted to do is to run the program to show how it works. You can see that the... Uh, the code, uh, the, not the code, but the, the simulation is actually over in this window. And the first question it asks is how many questions are on the test? And say we just had a four question test. And these are the values that are in the list. It's something that I left to maybe help uh, somebody debug or to, to be able to visualize what's actually going on with the program and help me to test it. So I just left it in there for now. So here you can see that it has the problem is five times eight. What is the answer? And then it asks for the next answer, and then 2 times 9, and now 0 times 8. And I'm, I'm going to put in a wrong answer just so that you can see what happens if we have a, a wrong answer for one of these. So I'm going to put 1 for this. And it tells me that the total number of correct answers is 3, and my score is 75%. So how do we go about developing a program like this? Well, the first thing I want to do is, since I'm going to be doing random um, multiplication problems is that I want to use the random module and I want to import the random integer uh, function from that. So to do that, I just do this uh, command from random import randint. Okay. The next thing is I have a very simple input statement where I'm asking the student how many questions are going to be on the test, right? So I'm assigning it to this variable called num underscore probs. I do want it to be an integer, so that's why I have the int. And I have, uh, I have this as an input, which means that the program is expecting the user to input something here. And that's where we input, if you look back over here where we ran this, this is where we input the value of four for the test. Now the list files, x and list files y when you see these square brackets that means that those are list and i'm just creating empty list to get it started um, this is the uh the the list after it populates the values and again you could probably remove that for the final program uh, or the final product but i left it in because it makes it easy to see what's going on now i move into my for loops so I say 4x in range numprobs. And remember, numprobs was the number of problems, so number of questions that were on the test. In this case, we had four. Um, now, in list, uh, Python starts with an index of zero. So it's basically saying for x in range, and it's going to use the values 0, 1, 2, and 3 uh, to populate the list. And so it's going to take a random integer from 0 to 9, and we say 4x in range, in this case 4x in range 4 is what that would say, or what that would, would be. Then we want x to be a random, each time it goes through the for loop, we want x to be a random integer from 0 to 9. Again, if you, this is just for multiplication tables up to 9, but you could go up to 12 or whatever you wanted to go up to if you wanted to. And now what we do is we want to append whatever that value of x is, to list vowels x, right, which is the empty list initially, but now it's going to append four values. Each time it goes through the loop, it appends another value to the list, and when it's done, it'll have four values, which is what you can see here from the output of the program. I do the exact same thing for y because I'm doing an x times y, right? So what I'm doing is multiplying the first value in this list times the first value in this list, and that's why it started out with 5 times 8. So now, um, and this is where I did the print, list files x, list files y, so I'm basically printing those finished lists. And again, it's a good debugging tool, and I just happen to leave it in for this. 
Now what we want to do is we want to go in and prompt the user or the student for the answers to the questions that we're going to give them. We also want to keep track of the number that they have correct. So before I go into the for loop, what I do is I then increment a variable uh, called numCorrect to zero. I'm just going to do a very simple for loop again. So I say for z in range numprobs, my answer is going to be list vowels x, and then it'll be in position z times list vowels y in position z. So again, we're going to go through this loop four times. The first time, it's going to pull the values in position 0, which is going to be 5 and 8. The next time around, it's going to pull the values in position 1, which is 2 and 7, and, and so on. And so what we're doing now is we're developing our answer. Then I, uh, this is just as for printing a blank line, this print uh, quotation slash n is just for printing a blank line to try to make it a little bit easier to read. And now what I want to do is print out what the problem is. I do that with this statement. So I put the problem is list vowels x or uh, the value that's in list vowels x in position z. Right? And anything that I have in, quote, in quotes is going to be printed out. So the problem is, that's where that comes in, and then the value that's uh, list vowels x in position z. So the first time around, it's picking out the value 5. And then I put a time sign in quotes to get the times. And then I do list vowels y in position z, which would then be, for the first time around, it's going to be 8. So that's how you get that. Now what I'm doing is I'm prompting the user to provide me what the answer. So in this case, it's going to be test quest uh, variable is equal to, and again, I want it to be an integer, and I'm asking for input. So the program is expecting input from this question, what is the answer? All right, and that's what you see here. It says, what is the answer? And you can either give them the, or the student can give either the correct answer or the incorrect answer. And finally, what I want to do is a very simple if statement. And I want to then see, is this answer, which is right here, right? We saw for the answer earlier. If the answer is equal to the value for test quest, which is right here, then it means that they got it correct. And what I want to do is increment this variable num correct by one. So I take num correct is equal to num correct plus one. So basically it means that the new value of num correct is equal to the old value of num correct plus one. And remember we initialized this to zero before we got into the for loop. Now you don't really need to do an at else because in this case if they get it wrong then the value of num correct is not going to change. You could have put else num correct equals num correct or even num correct plus zero if you wanted to, but it would be unnecessary since it's just going to remain at that value. Here I put in a, a blank line just to make it a little bit easier to read, and this is where we actually give them this part of it, where we put in how many total answers did they get correct, um, and uh, what the score is, or what the percentage is. So here we, in parentheses, we put the total number of correct answers is and then we use the variable num correct, right? So you put the total number of correct answers is in quotes, and then put a comma, and then num correct. And then that's how you get this line. And then the score is 75%. The way we do that is very similar. We put the score is, and then we take the number correct, or num correct, and we divide it by the number of probs, which is all the way up here in line 10, right? Remember when we asked for the number of problems that were going to be on the test, and then we just multiply that times 100 to get it into a percent, and then we just put percent in quotes. So hopefully you found this video to be helpful. It, it included quite a bit. Um, you dealt with uh, getting random integers, the use of lists, the use of for loops, a um, little bit more work with print statements, and also there was an, uh, an if statement thrown in there. Uh, so feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want to know when more of these videos come out. And thanks for watching this one.